Amen. I'm Brian Sixby. I'd like to welcome you to worship on this uh, fine morning. Uh, just another week, and, and we'll have this place, uh, not completely, but a little bit transformed for Vacation Bible School. <clears throat> Are you looking forward to it? Good, good. Um, man, that wasn't quite enough. Are you looking forward to it? Yeah. All right, all right, that's enough. Uh, you, you can go more if you'd like, but uh, we're looking forward to it as well. Uh, so next Sunday, we'll have a single service at 10 o'clock. Uh, uh, we'd encourage Sunday school, if you'd like to meet, to meet ahead of time, uh, 8.45 or something uh, thereabout, uh, so that we're all together at one service at, again, 10 o'clock next Sunday. There's a potluck afterwards, and if you forget to bring your pot, uh, you're in luck because there'll be plenty of food. That's how it works, right? Okay, something like that. But uh, if you'd like to bring food, please do so. Uh, we are bringing in chicken, and uh, uh, everything else is up to us uh, to, to provide. So uh, please bring something to share, and if you forget, that's okay. Uh, there, there'll be plenty around. But uh, <clears throat> looking forward to that. Uh, now, this coming week, we have uh, a lot of the usual suspects on the calendar. Uh, if you look through the calendar, see what all is happening. Uh, but uh, a few things are, are kind of on hold because we're, we're waiting for this upcoming week, for the Vacation Bible School week. So what I'd encourage you to do, and I'll, I'll repeat this later, is, is to take a little rest this week. Uh, uh, take some time to recharge, uh, especially tomorrow with the in Independence Day celebrations. Take some time to recharge, and we'll be uh, ready when, when they arrive next week. Uh, actually, this week. Um, so three things I wanted to ask of you, and then I know Marilyn, you're over there. Uh, Marilyn had something she wanted to ask as well. I thought I'd distract you real quick. But uh, so number one, uh, if you've got a name badge, please wear it. Uh, through throughout the week uh, if you've lost it somewhere we can uh, we can get more but uh, if you have a name badge please wear it you don't have to have the official one but uh, wear, <clears throat> wear a name badge uh, second uh, there are welcome packets and and visitor uh, sign-in sheets and so forth uh, so uh, please remember that they're out, out in the narthex and and they're there to be used uh, we do anticipate guests, uh, especially next Sunday and those Sunday following. Uh, so please, please use those. And three, uh, <clears throat> and, and we saw this one when we are out west, uh, you know, the whole thing about two sheep's distance, six feet, uh, six feet distance. So think about four sheep. So imagine you got four sheep, that's 12 feet around you. Uh, try to make sure you, you contact the people within four sheep's distance of you. Okay, so this Sunday, next Sunday, and every Sunday after that, try to reach the people within 12 feet of you. For some of you, that's, that's not many. For some of you, that's a lot. Uh, but uh, just think of it in those terms of people who are nearby you. Try to make sure you touch in with them every time you come through. Uh, Marilyn, I know you had something you wanted to share. I'm going to turn on the yellow mic for her. Yeah, but the people online can't hear you. Just real quick, Brian reminded me when he was throwing his papers up front of yeah. uh, the band at Fort Monroe this past Thursday. Uh, it was really windy down there. It was the Air Force band. They were wonderful. And all of a sudden, the back row, the wind started blowing and the papers, their music started flying up in the air and about five or ten of them were all gathered around trying to get their music. But some still had their, they knew that music. so. But anyway, that was really, you know, comedy of errors there. But anyway, but the Lord got him back to playing again. But anyway, Jane asked me to make this announcement. There is a really good Vacation Bible School announcement she's put in here about um, Friday night the, after the program. Please bring cookies, brownies. They don't have to be baked. They can be bought. Uh, veggie trays, fruit trays. We want this for our guests, our community, our volunteers, our church family, everybody be there. It'll be a fun evening, and we want everybody to enjoy. Um, but put this on your calendar um, so you'll know. And also, make sure you put your uh, put VBS for VBS, and you can put your things in the kitchen. But that's on July 15th after the program at six o'clock. So, with that in mind, I'll turn it over to you. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. So
So again, the dates for Vacation Bible School, July 12 through 15. Uh, 12, 13, 14 is a regular Vacation Bible School. The 15th is a celebration. And uh, if, if you can't make it any other night, uh, we, we can use floaters, by the way. If you can't make it any other night, then please make it on the 15th to have a chance to meet the families of the children along with, with everybody else. So uh, uh, with that, let us, I invite you to stand as we begin worship for the call to worship. Good morning. morning. I want to welcome everybody on this beautiful Independence Weekend. I want us to all take a chance today, thank God for giving our forefathers and people ever since the strength, the courage, the intelligence to make the decisions to make this the greatest country in the world. Okay? I'm going to start off with the call to worship. Today we celebrate our freedoms. Our freedom to worship the God who gives us freedom. Freedom does not come to us cheaply. So we ask for strength to use it well and wisely. May May we dare to become worthy of our freedom. Please remain standing while we do our first hymn. It's in the UMH uh, number, page 697, America. Amen. You may be seated. And now I invite the children to come for their time, all those under the age of 111. All right. Well, thank you for helping me out, Mason. Uh, We wanted to make sure, I wanted to make sure we had this here. So what is this thing called? You've been carrying this for a long time. It's a lighter. Uh, It's actually called an acolyte. Did you know that? No. So when I was growing up in church, we had a crucifer who carried a cross and, and acolytes, and uh, we carried something just like this. And uh, I never knew it, but the person carrying the acolyte is the acolyte. Isn't that interesting? So, so you're an acolyte carrying the acolyte, right? Um, but how does this thing work? Have you ever thought about it? Yeah, you move that, right? You move that, and it moves the, the what, what do we do here? We light that, right? Put, put some fire to it. And uh, how, how does it keep burning, by the way? 
you don't put it down. So you got to you got to make sure that this wick stays out long enough, right? And and there's wax here. You ever seen a candle burn? Yeah. So it works the same way a candle works. It it melts the wax and the wick slowly burns down with mel the melting wax. Now, what happens on a Sunday if you get there and you push this all the way up and there's no a wick on here? Yeah, it, it could break off, right? That's one of those little tricks they've shown you. You know, you, you close it, then you push it back open. Otherwise, the wax sits in there and it gets stuck. Uh, but if there's not enough uh, wick here, it, it won't work. Uh, you could start with it like this. It'll, it'll work for a little bit, maybe get halfway down, and then it'll burn out. And then what do you do? Yeah, you have to go back and light it up again, or, or hopefully Dave or somebody's there with you, and they've got their, their handy-dandy lighter, and they can take care of it. Now, the story we have this, this Sunday is a story about the, the ten bridesmaids, and five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. <coughs> the five wise ones, they didn't have a wick, but they had a candle with a wick in it, and they, they kept their oil. So, so when the time came, they had enough oil to burn. The five uh, not wise ones or the five foolish ones uh, didn't keep their oil. So when the time came, it was like this wick was right there and there wasn't enough to last. So they, they missed the chance to be part of the wedding celebration. So the point is about preparation, about being ready. And uh, part of being ready is thinking ahead. Is that an easy thing to do? Oh, good for you. <laughs> I'm proud of you. I have a hard time thinking ahead, and I, I've got, a few, got you by a few years. So uh, we, we want to think ahead. We want to be ready, and, and we, want to, we want to be ready when the time comes. So let, let's just keep that in mind, okay, Mason? All right. Lord, thank you for giving us everything that we need all the time. Help us to use our smarts and our wisdom so that we can always be ready to welcome you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Now I'd like to invite the ushers to come forward to receive God's tithes and our offerings. Let's pray. Lord, we are blessed to have the freedom to worship you openly. And you bless us with the freedom from tyranny of sin and death. Just as we use our freedom to help others, may we also use your freedom to help others. Bless the gifts we offer today and bless the givers. May these gifts help the world experience the freedom you give them. In Jesus' name, amen.
America the Beautiful, page 696. You may be seated. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty God, establisher of all that is good, you who cause nations to rise and fall, you who rise among us, those who are destined to lead to victory, we praise and glorify your holy name for our country in this great season of thanksgiving for the United States of America. We know beyond the shadow of a doubt that we have betrayed your confidence in the way that we have apparently let you down, especially in letting our country attempt to remove the name of Jesus from the face of our nation. However, we also know beyond the shadow of a doubt that as long as there is one congregation left, Jesus will remain the steadfast standard by which we live. No fear can hinder now the promise you made. As your love crashes around me, you make me brave. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, it is no secret to you that we are more than sorry for the pa part that we may have played in our country's state of affairs. We confess that we have been more than drawn inwardly by our own situations to the point of neglect to pray. Each of us know what we could have done or said or served, but then there have been times when we have responded to your guidance. We give you thanks for your tender mercies when we have missed the mark. In your love for us, you gave us your son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on a cross for our redemption. He gave himself to cover every sin, every mistake, every time we did not salute our nation's flag, every prayer where our heads remain unbowed. As we continue, a perpetual memory of Jesus' precious death, cleanse us. Give us another starting point again. Open my eyes that I might see glimpses of truth that thou hast for me. Place in my hand the wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free. O Lord of the harvest, Father of the bride, we, your errant children, are like the ten bridesmaids 
Some are preparing, some are preoccupied, but all desire to be ready when the groom arrives, be it the day, be it tomorrow, whenever he comes on that final day. We have been forewarned. It is not too late to go to the store for the oil of righteousness. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. In Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture this morning is Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But, they were too, but the wise took flask of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout. Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, no. There will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went with him to the wedding banquet. And the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also saying, Lord, Lord, open up to us. But he replied, truly I tell you, I do not know you. 
Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Praise be to God. Let's pray. Lord, we know neither the day nor the hour, but we know that you have come and we know that you are coming. Give us oil for our lamps. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I know Becky knows this song. I don't know if anybody else, but give me oil in my lamp. Keep it burning, burning, burning. Give me oil in my lamp, I pray. Give me oil in my lamp, keep it burning, 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 keep it burning till the break of day or judgment day. I've seen it both ways. All right, so uh, again, we, we need to teach y'all some songs someday. Uh, but uh, it, it, it's a song I learned at summer camp, uh, but, but you might have heard it at, at church at some point growing up. Uh, uh, some of these songs are great because all you need is a guitar. And, and somebody who halfway knows how to play it just to get the notes started. You don't necessarily have to have somebody who plays it well, just, just somebody to get it started. Uh, so we're coming to the end of the sermon series. We, we have this Sunday, and then next week we take a break for Vacation Bible School. Then the following Sunday, the 17th, uh, we'll finish off the, the series. And, and the, it's the wisdom of the desert. And again, there are two parts to it, and they both flow one into the other. Uh, one is being mindful, uh, that is being aware, being in the moment, uh, because of God's providence, and that's how they're linked. Because God provides for us, we can focus on the moment. We don't have to worry about the past. We don't have to fret about the future. We can be in the moment because God provides for us. Now, if you go out in the desert, you want to be aware. You need to be aware. You need to know what's happening. You need to pay attention because things can come at you quickly and they can come at you slowly. Right? You need to be aware when you're starting to get dehydrated because that happens. Uh, you need to be aware when there's scorpions or snakes or other critters around, and they're not as obvious there as they are here. Well, they're not all that obvious here. Uh, how many of you have walked upon a snake while you're walking around somewhere and just said, oh, right? anybody? Am I the only one that's ever been surprised? Okay, good. So, so you but, but you want to be mindful in that moment that, that that's what's facing you. You don't want to just walk into that snake. Uh, I, I remember when Caveman and I did our first long bike trip. I, this story just came to me, Caveman, so I didn't ask your permission. But uh, uh, we, we were riding along. Uh, th this was in the, the New River Trail in, in southwest Virginia. And uh, I, I noticed uh, a little twig sort of thing uh, popping up after cave in one, one spot, spot. And I, I slowed down. I looked down. It was a baby rattlehead that he just run over. Just little, little tiny baby rattlehead. I think it was. I mean, it was dead at that point, but I, I think it was. The, the head looked like it was that, that pointed head uh, that rattlesnakes would have. And then further along, uh, I saw this great big thing pop up, and it was about a 20-foot long black snake he'd ridden right over. That was an amazing creature. I don't think you've, have you ever, if you've, have you ever seen a really long, super long black snake? Yeah, they, they're, they're a little bit scary. And, and uh, when we lived in, in uh, Durham for a year before we moved out to Cary, where it was a little bit safer, uh, we, there, there was a snake that, that lived in our, our, our vicinity. And, and we discovered later the cesspool in the back was why it lived in our vicinity. And we discovered we had a cesspool in the back when it filled up and wouldn't empty. Right, that was a wonderful, a wonderful discovery one day. Um, but, but anyway, that was a huge black snake. And, and I, I, that, that guy, to my mind, it was that big around. Of course, it was only, you know, that big around or so. But it was huge. And, and you, you wanted to be aware, not that the black snake by itself is going to kill you, but, but it can certainly bite you and, and harm you and, and certainly mess up your day, your morning. Uh, but you also, so you want to be mindful of what's coming up but you also want to know that God provides. And, and that requires some wisdom. That requires some learning. That requires uh, paying attention to the people who live there, who can tell you what you need to, to watch out for. And, and it occurs to me that this is much the same way as our walk of faith is. 
right? We, we, we pull in the collective wisdom from the Bible from, from people who've walked the path in front of us, right? We, we learn. A disciple is a learner. A, a disciple is a person who's always in the process of learning and gleaning. So, so much like a lake would pull the water from the various creeks and, and, the riv- and the rivers and the mountainsides pouring into it, so we want to collect that information. And, and then we provide, right? That would be the next part. The lake provides. It provides a place to swim. It provides a place for animals to, to live in. It provides water. It provides for recreation. provides for a lot of things. But then we need to send it out, right? Just like a lake would send it out. If we don't send it out, we wind up like the Dead Sea. Uh, again, the Jordan River feeds into the Sea of Galilee, which is a, a lush lake. It's, it's an inland sea. It provides for so many people in that area of the world. There, there are not many seas in that area of the world. And, it, and it's, it has fish. It has all the things that it needs. But then it goes into what we call the Dead Sea. It's the same river, the Jordan River feeding both. And the Dead Sea is dead because it has no outlet. Right? So if we don't just, if we don't serve, if we're not serving as well as collecting, as well as providing, then, then we become dead. So now I'm describing our walk of faith, aren't I? That's what I'm talking about, our walk of faith. We, we have three legs that we require. Uh, and you could add a fourth leg if you want, but you don't need it. Uh, to, to collect, to, to learn, to be in the process of growing, you can do that by coming to worship. You can do that through Sunday school. And most of us need more than one source. Just like you need more than one river to feed a, a lake, you need more than one source to feed our minds, our spirits, to learn, to grow from. So, so we need to read the scriptures ourselves. We need to pray ourselves. We need to do other things to keep our lamps burning, to keep oil in our lamps. You can see where we're going here. Uh, and, and then we provide that the, we, there's a purpose for it. It's not just to serve us, it's to serve others. So we provide both for the church and for the community. And if we don't do that, then we become like the Dead Sea, closed off and, and sterile, unable to do anything, unable to fulfill its purpose, its God's given purpose. So that brings us to today, this story of the parable of the, the bridesmaids, the five, woolish, uh, the, five woolish, the five foolish and the five wise bridesmaids, or, or you could say the fickle bridesmaids. It's either one kind of works. There's a lot of interesting things about this story, but, but let's kind of talk about the background. So the bridesmaids had a particular purpose. They weren't just to come up and stand and look pretty. Right? We think of bridesmaids today, we think of the service and, and how they're supposed to wear the dress and they have a ceremonial function. Well, the bridesmaids had a ceremonial function back in the day, but they had more than that. Uh, on, the, on the day of the wedding feast, they were there to surround the bride until the time came to meet the groom, the bridegroom. So at an appointed time, they would leave the bride, they would go to the bridegroom. They would wait for the bridegroom, and they had lamps, because it was evening by then. They had lamps to lead the bridegroom to the bride's house, where he would pick her up, and then they'd lead her back, lead them all back to the groom's house, where all the festivities would formally begin. So they had a, an important role, and, and thus why they had the lamps. Now, we don't know exactly what kind of lamps. I read different uh, people who said they had torches, they had uh, hand lamps, whatever it was. They had lamps that required oil. And just like the acolyte requires that wick, so without the oil, the wick just burns. Now, in, in the story, they all have their, their lamp, they all have their oil. And they leave with that. The only difference is the five wise ones carry extra oil. Right? They, they get to where they're going. They, they, they wait at the, the groom's house, at the bridegroom's house. And, and they don't know at what hour the bridegroom is coming. They know when to expect him, but they don't know exactly. You know, they, they run on Navajo time, right, Becky? Right? Or, or island time. But, but the groom and the bride both have their own calendars. They both have their own clocks, and, and everything rides on their clocks, on their calendars. It's, it's what I've told brides before. This is the only time 
when everything does depend on you. If you don't show up, this thing doesn't start. Right? If you're not there, it doesn't happen. And, and the time for the service to start is a time you walk in. Right? It doesn't start without you. It can't start without you. And so they, they head out, and, and the five wise ones brought their extra oil. The five foolish ones didn't. And, and we don't know a whole lot about what they did other than there wasn't a great deal of difference. It seems like they all let their oil burn for that period of time except it was much longer than they expected. You know, they thought the bridegroom would come at five or six. Well, now it's seven, now it's eight, now it's nine, now it's ten, now it's eleven. And we've fallen asleep. They've all fallen asleep. They're, they're all in the same boat right here. And, and then all of a sudden they get the call. The bridegroom is coming. The bridegroom is coming. So they all go to their oil, their, their lamp, and they trim the wick so it's ready and, and the five foolish ones realize we're out of oil. What are we going to do? So they go to the wise one and say, hey, we need to borrow some of that oil. And this is maybe the only parable you'll see where Jesus doesn't tell them to share. Right? You, you can kind of expect this. It's almost Mr. Rogers. You can expect Jesus is going to tell us to share. But here he doesn't. The five wise ones say, we can't. Not we won't, but we can't. Because if we share our oil with you, there won't be enough for either you or us to do our job. We are to carry these lamps to light the way for the groom, to light the way for the bride, both. And we have enough oil to do both. If we share with you, we don't. And neither do you. So you need to go out and buy some oil. It's midnight. You ever tried to buy something at midnight? Okay, now if you're in New York, New York, New York City, it's, it's easy as pie. You know, you can, you can go and get almost anything you want almost any hour. Uh, but we're not in New York City. Uh, we're more like Washington, D.C. We're more like Hampton, Right? There's some places open, but you're going to have to travel a ways to get to those places that are open. And you're probably going to pay more than you really want to pay, but it is what it is. All right? So, so they head off to get their oil while the five wise ones head off with the bridegroom to pick up the bride and then take her back to the groom's home. And by the time the five foolish ones arrive, the door is closed. It's after midnight. You close doors after midnight. And they knock on the door and, and, and say, let us in. We're ready. We have our oil ready. <laughs> you ever done that? You ever been a, just a little bit too late? Just a, a tad too late? You had one job to do and you were a little bit late for that job. And by the time you got there, it was done. But I'm ready now. I'm ready now. I could go all night with this oil. Well, the master of the home opens the door and says, I, I don't know you. Go away. You don't belong here. The only difference, the, 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 we're not making a moral judgment on their character here, but the only difference between the foolish ones and the wise ones was that the wise ones brought extra oil. That's the only difference. So we could substitute uh, people going on a hiking trip. We could substitute almost anything, but, but the parallels don't quite work. This one works perfectly. The only difference is that one had oil and one didn't. One brought extra oil, one planned for extra oil, one thought ahead, and the other one didn't. There's no secret. There's no magic formula here. That's the only difference. The only difference. Now, let's go back to the beginning. Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven will be like this. So now we've got the whole setting in, in one nutshell. This is a parable of the kingdom of heaven. This is a parable of what heaven will be like in essence, of how we can be ready for heaven. And what's the point? Bring extra oil. 
bring extra oil. Don't bring your neighbor's oil. Don't bring your friend's oil. Don't depend on your friend or your neighbor to have the oil. Don't expect your, your mom or your dad to have the oil. I just slipped back into Roanoke speak for a second there. I had to learn uh, when I moved to Charlottesville uh, in, in college that there are two words for oil. The one I grew up with, oil, right? Because I went to a store one day and asked, where's your oil? Your what? Your oil. You know, you, the stuff you put in the car, your oil. And they said, oh, you mean oil. So don't forget your oil, not your neighbor's oil, not your father's oil, not your mother's oil, not your friend's oil, not your dog's oil, your oil. You need to bring your oil. There have been seasons in my life where things are busy. Some of them I can plan for. Easter's going to be busy. Christmas is going to be busy. Getting ready for charge conference is going to be busy. Uh, the, the season where we have to do staff uh, 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 evaluations is busy. They're, they're, they're different busy seasons, and, and I can generally plan for them. After a few years, you start to figure out those seasons. There, there are other seasons, though, that you don't really think about that become super busy. The, the, the time before 2000 was one of those times. That was a few years ago. Uh, some of y'all weren't around. At least a couple of y'all weren't around. Uh, the time before the year 2000 was, was one of those seasons. That what was going on? Right? There, there was a lot of excitement in the churches. Right, Even though we knew that Jesus probably wasn't going to return on this arbitrary date of January 1, 20, 2000, there was this thought, well, he could. Right? We, we ought to be ready. So there was a little extra pressure to do Bible study, to do things to help people get ready to study, to read Revelation, to do things like that. And then there was the Y2K bug. We had a computer which had some of our financial and, all in, and our membership stuff in it, and there was a question, is it going to be ready? Right? So we had to form a little team to look into that and make sure it was all good, and it was. You know, it was a simple computer, but it didn't need to do all sorts of elaborate things. And we could tell who was born in 1901 and who was born in 2001. <laughs> that wasn't going to be an issue. So we, we had a, a little bit of extra work. But then there was the, the, the little unexpected things. People did parties. People did uh, uh, gatherings. People were doing things that they didn't normally do. And so I found myself running around a little bit more than normal for a good long period of time. And then following the year 2000, it was a little bit more because some people did start coming back to church for a while. You, you might remember that with 9-11, that happened again. Uh, with 9-11, with there, there was a, a busy time that, that wasn't anticipated. And, and so things go on like that. Well, the pandemic was one of those times, except it was longer for me. I know it was longer for you too. But, but all the worry and all the work to, to, to get through that season, to keep our church together, to deal with the conflict that came up, it, it just it kept going and going and going. And I pride myself on carrying extra oil, right? That, that something happens as you age that you probably discern. You start to get a little bit more stamina. Because you've learned you can last longer than you think you can last. You've learned sometimes you've got to last longer than you think you can last. You can call it grit. You can call it hard-headedness. You can call it stubbornness, whatever you want to call it. It's a good thing. It's a positive thing. So I pride myself on having some stamina. And I, I pride myself on, on, on trying to do pretty good with self-care. But I found myself over the course of the last couple of years thinking, not again, not again, Lord. What's going to change this time? Or, or, or what, how are we going to deal with this one? Or, Lord, why is this happening right now? And, and it just kept happening, and it kept happening, and it kept happening. And I know it was happening to you all because I could feel it happening to everybody. Uh, that's one of those things they don't tell you about being a pastor. You actually do feel the weight of your congregation from time to time. You, you do bear that weight from time to time. Not all the time, 
but from time to time you bear it. And so I started after a while noticing my fuse was getting shorter. Now for me, that's remarkable because I pride myself basically on not having a fuse. You can throw something at me and I'm not going to explode. You, you can stomp, you can spit, you can make noises and I'm not going to explode on you. But I got to the place several times where I felt like I'm going to explode. I'm going to lash out. I'm going to take it out on somebody else because this is just too much. And so thanks to my wife, thanks to you, thanks to our staff parish, uh, I was able to take a, a good season off and, and watch that oil start to fill back. Because you see, you can carry a reservoir, but if you keep going back to the reservoir, the reservoir runs dry. And, and then you have to seriously dip into the Holy Spirit. But one thing they don't tell you about using the Holy Spirit reservoir, that also uses some of your own. Because the Spirit works with you. Spirit works with you. So you can pull from an infinite reservoir, but you're also going to be pulling from your own when you do that. And that's the way we're meant to live. That means we have to keep a reservoir too. When the reservoirs begin running low, you got to refill them. So after the first week, I could start to feel some stress coming off. And, and, and when I met the, the rest of the team and we started traveling Navajo country, I could start to feel the reservoir starting to get filled back. You know, the prayers and the preaching and the songs and the music and the joy and all the rest was starting to refill some of those. And then I, I had another week with the Norbertines to, to be basically on retreat and, and I could feel them just, you know, filling. Everything's refilling. And then the final week with family was, was just kind of a tapping everything back. In fact, I discovered that God, in the meantime, had built new reservoirs, too, and had helped me depend on the Spirit in ways I hadn't been doing. And so not only the reservoir, but my capacity to use the reservoir increased. Now, what does this mean for you? Or as we used to say growing up, what does this have to do with the price of rice in China? I don't know if you ever heard that one. You know, that's, that's what's the relevance? What does it mean? Well, I, I think the simplest explanation is the best explanation. The oil in the lamp is our faith. It's our faith. We have to collect, learn, just like disciples do. We have to serve, we have to provide, and we have to serve others. It has to go out. The three-legged stool or the lake or whatever metaphor you like, it has to be in place or we're not really living as disciples. Can, can you sit on a two-legged stool? You can try. <laughs> But, but, but the only way you're really going to succeed with that is pushing it up against the wall, which, by the way, creates three legs now. And that's what you're doing. You're creating the third leg where it's missing. And it's not going to be a comfortable seat, is it? Not, not with two legs. Not with one leg. And, of course, if there's no legs to it, it, it's not a stool. It's just a thing sitting on the ground. So we have to keep our faith growing. Right? We have to keep the reservoirs growing. We have to learn how to dip into the Holy Spirit and use the Holy Spirit's reservoir. We have to be mindful of our present as well to know when we're going too deep and when we need to replenish, when we need to pull back. And, and, and we are a very nurturing church. I know that because there's one word we hate. No. How many of you like the word no? I know we've got a few. Raise your hand. Be, be proud of it. Everybody needs to look at the people who can say no and say amen. Thank you, brother. Thank you, sister. Because you're the one I need to lean on when I need to say no. But, 
But there are times when we have to say no. I'm sorry, I can't help you with that. Or not today. Or whatever version of it you, you can live with. But when we stand before the throne, we're not going to be asked, how's your mother's faith? How's your father's faith? How's your brother's faith? How's your sister's faith? How's your preacher's faith? How's your daughter's faith? How's your friend's faith? How's your cousin's faith? We're not going to be asked that. We're going to be asked how is your faith? How is your faith? How did you keep it full? How did you keep oil in your lamp? Did you come to worship to be with others? Did you go to Sunday school to be with others and learn and share and grow? Did you serve alongside others, serve the homeless, the hungry, the, the population of, of, of the community that needs serving? Did, did, you, did you do something with that faith? Did you extend it? Did you expand it? Did you grow it? Did you rely on your faith when things were falling apart? Or did you abandon it? What, what did you do with your faith? How did you keep your oil filled? As I mentioned at the beginning, but during the announcements, I'm suggesting this week is a filling week. This week is a time to fill that lamp, to get it ready, and to get your reservoir ready. Because next week will be the time that it will get emptied. And it should get emptied. Because we're serving the kids of this community. We're serving our neighbors. We're serving our friends. It, it's time next week to empty everything. To go ahead and dip into the reservoir and bring it out and, and let it wash over the people around us. Trusting that the Spirit will replenish as we go. But don't forget, it's a question about your faith. Your faith. So last week, I, 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 we talked about belief, basically, if you want to put it that way. Putting our, our, uh, having faith that, that Christ has died, that he died for our sins, that he was risen for our sins, that we are saved before him. This week, it's about practicing that. It's about employing it. It's about using it. It's about going out into the world and making disciples. It's all of our job as a church, and it's all of our job individually, too. Okay? It's not one or the other. It's both. We're part of the body of Christ. Our job is to pour out our faith on this community. So let's take a week and rest up. Let's take a week and pour out. And let's keep repeating that. Because that's the pattern he's created for us. Let's pray. Lord, help us to use our faith. Not simply look at it. Not simply toy with the idea, but use it. Use it to love other people. Use it to speak to other people. Use it to share your gospel with other people. Use it in times of hardship. Use it in times of joy. Help us to keep that oil filled. So that when the time comes, we will be ready. In Jesus' name, amen. And what a better metaphor than gathering around the table, filling our oil, keeping our lamps filled. So I invite you as we gather around the table to hear these words of invitation. 
Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with God and one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and each other praying. Merciful God, God, we we confess confess that that we we have have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. I invite you to take a moment and share the peace of Christ with the people next to you. For the great Thanksgiving, we're using musical setting A on page 17 in the hymnal. The Lord be with you. And And also also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We We lift lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It It is is right right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Mm. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets who looked for the day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, when nations shall not lift up sword against nation neither shall they learn war anymore. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the Blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captive, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, ate with sinners, and by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, You gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many 
for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Christ Jesus, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, with the confidence of God's children, we pray the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The body of Christ given for us. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for us. I invite you to come forward as the Spirit leads to either stand or kneel at the altar. We'll give you the bread, which you can then dip into the cup. We also have the individually packaged ones for those who wish. Please come as the Spirit leads you.
thank God for all that we've been that we have received today. Let us stand and join together our final hymn when I survey the wondrous cross, verses one through three, to begin with. <laughs> Use that oil, keep that oil, bring that oil, keep it burning, and make sure you bring extra. Go in peace. Amen. <laughs> 